Eki and Judd, daily Minnesota sports entertainment. Uh, some non Vikings things happened over the yeah. weekend. I'm not sure if not sure if you guys saw anything that mm-hmm. happened that was uh, non football mm-hmm. related. But let's deliver some uh, bonus statements here. Non Vikings. We know Declan had a travel situation he wants to get into. Oh yeah. Uh, let's. We, which we don't know a thing about, and no. I'm super curious. No. Yeah, I, I, mean, I we'll see what happened here. All right, Judd, why don't you start us off here? Bonus statements from the weekend. Okay, bonus statements. Um, I'm going to start with the Minnesota Wild, who Hello. who split two games. They beat they they again fell behind on Saturday to the Ducks. They came back, and does this sound familiar? They rallied to win in overtime. They then fell behind to the Nashville Predators on Sunday and played easily their worst game in the first five games. And here's my statement. Kirill Kaprizov needs to start shooting the damn hockey puck. He had three shots on goal in three-plus periods because the game went into OT on Saturday. All of them were in the second period. On Sunday, he had three more shots on goal all in the third period. So he had no shots on goal in the first and second. He has right now... For the season, 13 shots on goal. Just to provide some context, fourth-line winger Brandon Duhame has 16 shots on goal. Kirill Kaprizov, like, he's, I know he's pressing. I know he got the big contract. He he has yet to score a goal. I understand that this all factors into his, his scuffles, probably, when it comes to overthinking what he's doing right now. But shooting for him is not difficult. Like, we've seen him get into Mm -hmm. uh, um, stretches where he shoots. And guess what happens when he shoots? Because he's really good at hockey. Oh, my God, the puck goes in. The Mm -hmm. puck goes in the net. Kirill Kaprizov needs to, like, the simplest, the easiest way to simplify this, and and he did get a talking to from the coaching staff before the game on Sunday, but the easiest way beyond, like, well, he should do this, he should do that, no, do this, shoot the puck. So why doesn't he? He didn't do it last year, and he gets... I think he's trying to he's such a creative player mm-hmm. and he's so and 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 I think he's trying to uh I think he's guilty of trying to set up and make the perfect goal. And and this is a problem in this sport for some guys. They're just so intent on let's score the goal that's going to be the perfect goal as opposed to boy, you know, you know why hockey's weird and random and arbitrary <laughs> because guys shoot pucks and they go off breezers they go off skates but unless you shoot the puck it can't go off a breezer a skate it can't deflect in so he needs to just start shooting the puck it's it's the primary reason why he is being paid over the next five years nine million per year it's it's kind of amazing like i'm just going through last year um so austin matthews shot the puck 222 times last year Mm -hmm. and Tops in the NHL. And uh, Kaprizov shot the puck 157 times. So Austin Matthews is taking, on average, like almost two extra shots per game. That's part of the reason why he had 41 goals in a shortened season last year. So what do you guys, because I know you guys are in lockstep on this, what do you guys have to say to the, the other sections of wild media and fandom that say, why are people panicking so much? Relax. Everything will come around here for Kaprizov. Just get off of his back. Well, number one, as we do with the quarterback, it is okay to have high expectations for superstar players. Now, Kirk Cousins might not be a superstar player in his league, but Kirill Kaprizov is a superstar player for his team. Kirk Cousins is a superstar player for his team. It's okay to have high demands for that. And second, Kirill did this last year. This It's very similar to what happened. He first... 17 games for Kirill Kaprizov last season. He shot the puck only 1.67 times per game. It's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. But over the last 35, he doubled his shot rate. So he doubled it to 3.37 shots per game. And Eureka, guess what happened? He also Get doubled... Those nerds! 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 Coming with the facts! <laughs> Coming with the facts! Coming yes. with his goal... Doubles his goal rate, right? Because if you shoot the puck more, you're going to score more. Crazy concept, right? Absolutely mind-blowing concept. Oh, how dare we ask for more from a superstar player? Yes, the Wild are 4-1, and and it's great, but Kirill Kaprizov needs to shoot the puck more. And when he has shot the puck more, he scores more goals. If you took 3.37 shots per game and mapped it out over 82, that's 270-plus shots in a regular season. 
And also, guys like Kirill, Ovechkin, Matthews, if you shoot the puck at a high rate, the shooting percentage of it Over being higher than league average is completely sustainable. Or, or Bergeron. How? God, it's just like it's it's completely okay Quiddle? to ask for this from your superstar player. And yeah, Krillsman, he's got five assists. He's a playmaker, but he needs to shoot the puck more. Right, and that's his yeah. role. Like that that's your role, dude. You are you are the one without a doubt, he is the one guy on this team who if you pulled the players and said, Who well, wouldn't you mind if he was sort of selfish? They'd say ninety seven. Kirill. Like they want him to shoot. Yeah. And, and on that line, there is Great definition of roles, okay? Eck, Eck will make some plays, but he is going to go t- to the net and get the old hockey cliche, greasy goals. Zuccarello loves to pass the puck. It's what he's going to do. He is at, at an age where you're not going to call Mats in and be like, Mats, I'm going to change your game. Hmm. Kaprizov is the finisher. He's the gunner. He is the gunner. He is the sharpshooter. And if he is going to pass back to Mats, my idea last night on the Judd's Hockey Show that we did with Declan was then put Fiala with Kirill. Because at least if Kirill's going to pass the puck, if he's going to insist on, on this, Fiala will say, okay, dude, thanks. Bang, shot on goal. Six shots on. Kevin Fiala in last night's game had as many shots as Kaprizov did for the whole weekend. That's not that's not acceptable. That's I got like, one, one more here. Get those nerds! I think you're onto something with like he's he's looking for the the beautiful goal like the mm-hmm. the the perfect either sort of you know whatever like he's just looking for like a clean amazing highlight real goal sometimes. So last year he actually scored on basically one in every five shots he took was a goal, which is amazing. It was one of the highest shooting percentages. It was right there with Austin Matthews in terms of yeah. shooting percentage. Now I don't think the solution is just. Just start firing pucks at the net, like you right. know, like a jugs machine or something. You know, I think the question is, okay, if he's going to get you an extra couple shots per game, is he just flinging pucks toward the net senselessly, or and or is he taking opportunities away? Like, if you were to be more of a facilitator, is he taking opportunities away? I don't think it's zero sum though. Like, I think I think he can increase his shot output without like taking things away from teammates Absolutely. necessarily. Absolutely. That's that's 100%. my hockey whisperer. I like it. Hockey whisperer is here. Nerd whisperer. I love it. <laughs> Get the nerdy nerds! hockey whisperer. The Kraken's number one fan, right. Macadac. Yeah. Don't, that's right. Don't be confused. Macadac loves his Kraken. Exactly. I did. Go, I did go down for a Kraken pregame uh, festivities, and it's it's a fun vibe. It, it does oh, yeah. feel a lot like when the Wild launched. There was a new excitement, but it's a little different here because they didn't have a team before. I think a lot. Right. There were some people that were kind of like, ah, I'm, I'm kind of in on the Wild, but they're not the North Stars. Uh, that that new that fresh new team smell. Judd, that time. was Judd. You're describing. That was Judd me. I was outside the, the X saying, "Don't go in. It's not the North Stars. Don't it's go in. It's not the same. Don't man. allow them to. The, no. Uh, it's just do not it. the same. All right, Declan. All right, I'll I'll continue to get more nerdy with the uh, the local hockey team here. Uh, my statement is: the Wild can't afford to have poor goaltending. They just simply cannot. So. Kapo Kakinen gets his first start yesterday for the Minnesota Wild after Cam Talbot played the first four games. And it, it doesn't take any hockey whisperer, any common sports fan to realize that Kapo Kakinen was terrible yesterday. And a box score from an eye test, five goals on his first 22 shots. He was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Now, Cam Talbot got the first four games of this season, and Talbot's had a history of being run out there a ton. I believe Edmonton started him like 70-plus games in a season three or four years ago. And Talbot through four games is basically who Cam Talbot is. And to get nerdy, let's go by his even strength percentage, save percentage, and his power play save percentage. Wow, here we go. And even his high danger save percentage. Let's get really, really nerdy here, okay? Feeling dangerous. So even strength save percentage for Cam Talbot, 923 this season. He's allowed six goals on even strength. Six goals. You just stopped 78 of them. That's a 923 save percentage. That's pretty dang good for five on five. You, you can't ask for more from that. On the power play, he's only stopping 800% of the puck. So he has a save percentage of 800%, which is not great. But at the same time, you're down a man. It's more likely you're going to allow a goal on a power play situation than you are an even strength situation. 80%, right? Yeah, the 80%. Yeah, 80%. Sorry. 
Eighty percent, I would lock him up long term. Yes, that'd be or that'd eight, be or awesome. 800 percent, I'm locking God. him up long term. But yeah, he he has allowed. Let's see here, five power play goals on thirty shots. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, so he's been probably also about league average against the power play, in a high danger save percentage situations. Now there obviously we have, we have a ton of sample size here because it's only been five six games for most NHL hockey teams. But among goaltenders that have logged 100 minutes so far this season, mm-hmm. in high danger save percentage, according to Natural Stat Trick, Cam Talbot ranks 16th in the NHL, 80 70, 875 8, 8, in save in high danger save percentage. So basically, he's a league average goaltender in high danger situations. He's a league average goaltender in five on five situations, and he's a league average goaltender in power play situations. He is who he is. So even though in the Jets game on Tuesday when the Wild their home opener and he had a shaky game. He, 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 he is who he is. His stats and his eye test, it, it indicates who he is. But my point is with Kapo Kakinen, you're going to need a backup goaltender to come in and not be an absolute train wreck. Because I know what I can get in Talbot. And I think Talbot is also the kind of goalie that you can ride and can get hot and can carry you to a Stanley Cup if he gets hot. But you can't run him out there for 70 times, and the Wild can't afford to do that. So if they realize quickly that in Kapo Kakinen's short amount of times getting starts, which I'm sure he'll get at least, hopefully, one on the upcoming three-game road trip for the Wild, if they realize that Kapo Kakinen isn't it, I wouldn't be hesitant at all to acquire another backup goaltender, which happens all the time in this league. Because you can't afford Cam Talbot to be starting seven so times. Are you out on are you out on Kapo like long term? I think so. Oh, really? Yes. I'm not out yet. You're done. I'm, I'm, I think this is I've pretty quick enough. to. Uh, ooh, this is pretty quick to. And he, here's the thing, though. Like th- this happened with Darcy Kemper, and Darcy Kemper has turned himself into a, a good goaltender. He has, but Capo is a head case. Darcy is a head case. I can't have a lot of goalies are right, but ta- I don't think Talbot is. Talbot doesn't give me the Dubnik vibe of he's no, a, he's an absolute. I, head I agree case. with that, but he's the exception, not the rule. And quarterbacks and goaltenders cannot be mentally weak people. And if if Kapo Kakinen can't handle pressure and can't handle, oh man, what was me? I let in a shot on the first attempt of the game. Yeah. Then you have to find someone else to back him up. Kapo does ha- have. Um, it seems like a disturbing trend of if things spiral quick, he's done. So like so like it, it's like okay, you gave up a bad goal. Okay, dude, move on. It's done. Kapo seems to not get past that. So if he gets off to a really good start and is is having a really good game, he's brilliant. He's great. But if he gives up a bad goal, now it's like, okay, now it's two goals, it's three goals. I'm not done yet, but I agree with Dex's point. And the most important thing here is you're going to have to make this decision coming out of the Olympic break. Because look at that schedule. Cam Talbot can't play. Like, like it is literally bang, 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 bang. Games are going to be ridiculous, and they're going to come fast. And so if you've decided by, by then, eh, Capo is okay, but not our guy, because... In that last stretch, you are going to have to go to a goalie rotation that is essentially a 1A, 1B, not a 1-2. So if Declan's right, you're going to have to pull the trigger uh, at some point before you come out out of that break or else it's going to be a complete death. Yeah. yeah. It will um, be. It'll be a death march. It'll be bad. No, I I, I agree. Like it's, Declan the, laughed. The, but they're, they're trying to cram all these games in – they're ba- have they pushed the playoff start date back much yes, from like it's, a I, little let, bit? But yes, let me be clear. It's why I hate going to the Olympics. It's interrupting the season that you're supposed to be focused on. Oh, I like the Olympics. I hate this. It's fun. I love the 56 game season. Make I would I would honestly be in on the NHL going down to 56 but, games. Yeah, the the, the wild the too. wild I think has one home game in February and then February's done. For an international tournament, I don't care if it's the Olympics. I don't care what it is. Your league should not interrupt itself for the sake of an international tournament. I hate it. Just because, just because you hate the Olympics and the people, just because, just because you don't get the bobsled, okay, doesn't mean that. No, a lot of people they'll love it because it's such a great tournament and it's an all star and and that's true. It is, but it's, it's better hockey, bigger ice. But you, yeah, but you should be focused on what your season is, not stopping your season to accommodate something else drives me nuts well uh federated insurance has a has a straight line focus all right they accommodate it's, you they're not messing around with all these fringe activities they just want to help protect your business from risk protect your employees your bottom line they've got all kinds of tools and smart people at federated insurance to do just that they've been around for over 100 years 
Well, not all of the people there have been around for 100 years. Be pretty old. Uh, but multiple uh, <laughs> generations. How, how can I help you here at Federated? <laughs> Come I on was, in. I, I was born in 1898. We used to <laughs> ride the trolley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Computer? You got, hold on. I'll pull my notepad out. <laughs> Federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right. Here's my first non-Viking statement. The Timberwolves might be better than the playing round games. We sit here and talk about can they just be the 10 seed? Can they just get, get just be between the 7 and the 10 seed, okay? Um, well, I've seen the first two games, and there was a little <laughs> blip. They let off the gas pedal a little bit against the Pelicans in the third quarter. All right, it happens. Towns got... Sorry. I've seen Towns. the first eight quarters. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, defense is active. They've got 10 or 11 actual quality NBA players in rotation for the first time in God knows how long. And how about this stat so far from our friend uh, Alan Horton, voice of the Minnesota Timberwolves and friend of the show. We should get him on sometime soon. Towns and Edwards have played 54 minutes together in two games. And the Timberwolves are plus 42 in yeah. those 54 minutes. Now I get it. Yeah. It's yeah, not I'm exactly the two most formidable opponents in these first couple weeks. Uh, I don't think the Pelicans and the Rockets will be playing each other in uh, a playoff series. But this is what like people keep saying. It's the Pelicans and the Rockets. You guys, it's the Timberwolves, too. Like right. the Timberwolves have been what yeah. the Rockets and the Pelicans are for the majority of the last 17 years. They need to be stomping on these teams. And now when Towns fouled out, like that game got kind of close and then they finally put them away. But I love what we've seen so far in these first two games. I love that Pat Beverly is just like in guys' faces and he adds a level of personality. And what's amazing is we've all been talking about Ben Simmons for months, right? Like Ben Simmons, and I've been the leader of this, I think, this club. Defense, defense, defense. Where are you going to get the defense from? And Ben Simmons could maybe come in here and like add a whole new layer of defense. Well, their defense has been really active without Ben Simmons. Like, Jaden McDaniels has been blocking multiple shots a game the first couple games, and uh, Josh Okogie's been active. So I, I don't know. I'm just I, I'm just saying. All right, the over under for this team was like 35. Unless there's eight injuries, in. unless there's injuries, eight quarters in. You're saying that, lob? Wow. Take the Are you escalator saying lob? Up, up, uh, I'm not saying lob. Are you saying lob? Say I'm, lob. I'm not saying lob for this year. But I will, I, I will, I will keep that door open for future seasons with this can't, this uh, cat ant pairing. We'll call them the can't with a K. You can't call them the can't. You can't call them the can't. <laughs> That's a terrible name. If don't they roll a two, maybe. Don't say you can't. Something they, like um, that. I don't know. So I, I know that the Rockets and Pelicans aren't good, but the one thing that I will say is, when's the last time that we've seen eight quarters from this team devoted to defense as much as this, which is effort. So, like, I don't care who you're playing. Like, you could play the Pelicans, Lakers, Golden State. And, yes, the, the last two teams are better. But if you're going to play defense, I think it's going to change the game a bit. I do want to caution a little in that there's no way you're going to keep up this level of defensive engagement for every game this season. And sure. when you start to play Steph Curry and LeBron no. James, it's going to look a lot different um but i th i think like this there's some bricks being laid here well n not in the way that you're used to bricks being laid by the timberwolves that i think should be really encouraging <laughs> uh, i love pat bev yeah, man. i'm gonna go on the record right now i love pat bev pat bev is going to get in faces of teammates and opponents yeah. he's gonna push opponents he is going to not bat back down i think that that is a sneaky great acquisition because he's he is going to bring to me exactly what Benino and Ian Cole brought to the Wild last year, which is uh, I've been there, I know how to do this. Yeah, watch me. And if you don't, I might beat you up. A couple uh, Pat Bev anecdotes too from the weekend. So he went, and I can't remember if he was asked this question, but in one of his uh, media sessions, he said Chris Finch is my guy. He goes, and I don't have a lot of guys, and I don't go out and vouch for a lot of guys. But Chris Finch is my guy. Like, he loves Chris Finch. And I, awesome. I don't know if they had a relationship before this or if Chris Finch has just made this impression in the last couple months. And then the other thing, 
there was a, a point in like the third or fourth quarter of that game against the Pelicans where Pat Bev knocked a ball off the leg of like Brandon Ingram, and uh, the officials called it Pelicans ball. And immediately Pat Bev's like, you know, review it. He's giving the review sign like, no. And he's and he's and he's you know he's talking to everyone on his bench like, no, no, no. And then they show the replay, and of course. He knocked the ball off Ingram's leg, and it goes out of bounds. So the, the referees go in, and they review it, and uh, and they reverse the call. And Beverly, not content to just like, yep, all right, we got the ball back, walks over like down the scores table to the official and gives the most like – he gave this look. I'm trying to explain it to the audio audience. Like, like obviously, you guys screwed that call up. Like, he had to walk out of his way to go over there and tell the official, like, yeah, you idiot. I like it. Like, Good. I was right. And it's just a small anecdote, but, like, that saltiness of his personality mm-hmm. uh-huh. is something that this team has not had. Jimmy Butler not- brought it for, like, five minutes. Right. And beyond that, they've basically not had it for 15 years. Pat it's Bev great. ain't going to get pushed around, which I love, because the, the Wolves, for how long, have basically been the team that got sand kicked in its face. Good for him. Yep. All right, Dex. You guys want the Chicago trip? I think oh wait, it might be okay. Jed. Let's I think it might be Jed. let's do a I've couple more, more. Let's do a couple more yeah, quick, and then we'll get the Chicago trip. Like we got we got all the time in the world here, by the way. All the time in the world. I'm oh, yeah. back, but your show. All the time. Shot clock. A lot of shot clock time. Four corners. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh, Dan Seaman's knocking the door. Oh, Ross is coming in. Oh, weird. I'm gone. Oh, that's well. Roscoe did do a Roscoe did a bang up job. I'm not gonna lie. Roscoe was fantastic. Gus Ferrat, man. Player of the week. Coming in. Always Gus Farad. I think he was more like the rookie who you draft and then comes in and supplants the veteran. And then Bailey it's Ober. Just, and then it's just no, no, I don't think it was Bailey Ober either. I'm trying to think of a rookie. He's the young changed. quarterback that came in, and you weren't like yeah. you. You, you kind of want to see more of the young quarterback yeah. going forward, not at yeah. the expense of the old but you know quarterback. What? You've got Drew Bledsoe you... was good. Drew Bledsoe was good, but this Brady kid was a little more special. <laughs> oh, got it. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, Drew Bledsoe went on to play a few more years and launched a wine company. It was yep. great. They always yeah. It's been fantastic. All right. I got one more here. I'm going to um, venture out to Macadac's neck of the woods for this statement, okay? The Seattle Kraken have gone and done it. Former Wild executive Todd Lywicki, who played a big role, of course, in the Wild on opening night in 2000, retiring the number one, and then got a job with the Seahawks and retired the number 12, which, by the way, the 12th man thing is cool, but they retired the number, That's great. has retired on opening night of the Kraken's first game against the Canucks, has retired number 32 for the Kraken in honor of the fans because the Kraken are, A, the, the 32nd team in the National Hockey League, and 2, B, drew 32,000 season ticket depositors in one day. That's, and a, so, that's obscure. And so number 32... You need to retire the number and, for that? Yes. And so number 32 now what? has been retired like number one, which drives me crazy. <laughs> and the other thing is, I feel like like when Todd was, was here, he was a really button-up business businessman, executive type. I mean, he's a very, very smart guy. He still is. But go back and watch his um, him doing talking on the ice before the game during this ceremony on Saturday. And he's become a little Vince McMahon-like. Like he's yelling, you have done it! With, hey, Seattle, we've done it! Number You're 30. fire. Yeah, it's a little McMahon-like. And Kiss he, my it, ass. It, 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 yeah, go back Dave and watch Hexel. it. But anyway, so they've retired the number 32 for the, the love XFL. of God. Can all these leagues please stop retiring numbers before you play a bleeping <laughs> okay, game? The wild one's hilarious. Like, this is pretty bad because it's like 32... No one's gonna know what that even means. Oh yeah, we sold thirty-two thousand season no. tickets. Like yeah. you, no you depositors, Phil. It. It's not even. It's not yeah. even sold. It's will you buy a ticket? <laughs> yes, I will. You're one of thirty-two thousand. Yeah. But then, like the wild one is ridiculous because you don't even know. Like they retired the number number one for number one fans, right? That was the deal. Yeah. Yes. Number one fans. Have, yes. Didn't he also coin state of hockey? That was that group as well. Yes. Yeah. Which is genius. Yeah, that's they, a genius. They, they yeah. But the yes. number one thing is, listen, we don't even, you haven't even played a game yet. We don't know if the Correct. fans are good. The fan, now the fans, the wild fans right. have turned out to be. But you great. lost the North Stars. Yeah, but you don't know. And like, so, I know. It's a little presumptuous. And do we? Or maybe they ret- spoke it into existence. I don't know. And why can't like like you know if you have attendance that's great or something? I, if you want to hang a damn banner, I wouldn't personally. But let's stop retiring numbers. 
<laughs> and by the way, this is the third time, Todd, you've done this. The third time. Maybe once it was okay. Personally, I don't agree. But, you know, three times now? If I had to rank all three of those based on, like, how much sense they make, retiring the 12th man is very clever. Because it's very easy to explain, too. What's number 12? Oh, it's it's the 12th player. We are the 12th player. We, we right. matter. Like, it's good. Right. Okay, number one for Wild fans. I don't know. It's hard to – it's like number one – Number one, number, one, I, number one fans. Number one fans. I don't know. Uh, this one is way too convoluted, so I got to rank this one third. Anyway, but uh, but but they have nailed the marketing for this. There's more people with oh. Kraken jerseys than God, Seahawks it's been jerseys. Great. Um, all right, I have two quick rifle. I'm going to rifle off two quick ones, and then we'll give Declan space here. So, number one, Eddie Rosario was always destined to do that in the playoffs. <laughs> it's just disappointing it didn't come in a Twins uniform. But for whatever reason, no one does that in a Twins uniform in the playoffs since Kirby Puckett. Like Kirby Puckett was the last one to do that. Maybe A.J. Pierzynski in 2002 because he hit a big three-run home. It's been a very long time. But, like, we haven't seen that. It's like, Eddie, buddy, couldn't you couldn't mix that in against the Yankees? You know, 2017? <laughs> I know. I know. 2019? Um, and then uh, my last one is I saw a lot of people having a good time last night. But I got to tell you. Rolling Stones are overrated. I agree. The most overrated rock band. I completely agree. In American agree. music history. The wow. Rolling Stones. In music history? Sorry. American Period? music across, history. I'm, I'm not going to speak for Egyptian music, I, but I, I will speak for American music history. British Invasion? I'm Team Beatles on this, by the way. Like, I, oh, I, I am too, yeah. but I think Okay, I'm Stones, sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. So, I said American... I'll just say in, uh, in, in world history, because you're right. They're a British band. In, Can I parse in world this apart? They're the most oh, overrated you, band. I'd like to parse this apart just, just oh, a little bit. Just a little bit. This is no, okay. Episode. Well, no, 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 no. Mick Jagger. I mean, to his he's a great. Credit, he's a great. God bless man. him. Yeah, man. He is, and and he is seventy eight years old. So what oh, he's doing oh, is I'm incredible. Ta- I'm talking about when he was thirty five too. Right now, I, I think I would disagree. I think I would I would disagree with your assessment from the Stones Prime. Um, they're not my favorite, but I wouldn't I wouldn't call them overrated. But now what they're trying to do and milking the cow like this, I mean, yes, it is. It's a lot. 70 I don't is disagree. impressive. I, I, I will well, not take that away. He's, he's Dan, super impressive. I mean, he's older than Roycey. Mm. He and gets Patrick's up there, too, in, and, he, and he, dropped all the, he dropped all the Minnesota bars. He dropped I had, a I had four Juicy Lucy's at Matt's Bar and the 5A I went Club. To and the five. It's like, brother, do you think you're 78, man? Your digestive system, you can't handle half a Juicy Lucy and a beer at this point. So he stop lying Keith to the audience. Being alive is remarkable. Yeah. Are we sure Keith Richards is still alive? You know yeah. what? Or, or is it a weekend at Bernie's situation with him? Oh, no, <laughs> man. No, just it's pro- incredible. They just prop him up. Mick mentioned Surly, so you know what? Go Mick. Go Stones. <laughs> Pop that jersey. God, dude. All right. All right. Hey, so man. Declan Declan took a weekend trip to Chicago <laughs> and then texted Judd and I very cryptically on Saturday and said, my trip ended early. I'll save mm-hmm. it for Monday. And we're like, wow, mm-hmm. okay. All right. yeah, Did so, you get arrested uh, or something? Nope. Not to get arrested. Um, so I, I took yeah, I took a little bi week vacation. You know, there's only a few Sundays off in the in the in the calendar year for the yeah. last three months. So I like to get out of town. I was supposed to go to New York. That was the original plan about a month and a half ago. But then my best friend decides to move across the country. So then I had, I had to scramble and I I audible. And I went to Chicago. Because I haven't been there since I was 18. Uh, I went there the week after high school graduation, but I hadn't been back since I have a cousin who lives there, so I hung out with her. I thought it'd be a great little time, right? So I go to Chicago. I stay in West Loop and in downtown for the first two nights. Had an absolute blast. Loved it. And then on Friday, I moved out to the Logan Square neighborhood where my cousin was um, just to get out of downtown. And exp- I mean, Chicago's a huge city, man. So I, I figured there'd be other, other places to see. So on Friday, my, my cousin actually leaves for the rest of the weekend. So now I'm, I'm actually by myself in Chicago for the rest of the trip, which I knew going into the trip. And I was fine with because that, that that's what I expected, and I wanted just some me time as well. So it's Friday night. Uh, I'm wandering Logan Square neighborhoods, and I end up at a bar. I had, I had to get some drinks and some food in me. So you're just alone. I'm alone in Chicago. It's awesome. Yeah, okay. alone Love in it. Chicago. I had an yeah. Airbnb. I've done that, uh, that before. I, it is fun. Yeah, yeah. I had an Airbnb that I checked into after staying in downtown. So I had an Airbnb for the rest of the weekend. That was the plan. Had a nice host. I had the whole basement awesome level to myself. It was a great oh, Airbnb. Oh, was, was there someone else, not to keep derailing this, was there someone yeah. else in the Airbnb with you? Yeah, there was one person above me. So there was like a wife and her husband above me. 
I always think uh, that's a little weird. Like, oh, it there's just weird. like a family upstairs. Yeah, I didn't like. I'm just I like, honestly, I oh, like sorry, I've got some digestive issues in one of mm-hmm. your bathrooms. Yes, <laughs> it's my clogged. God. Hey, it's your, my God, it's your toilet. <laughs> so, it's Friday night. I'm at the bar. I'm alone for the rest of the trip. Just trying to figure out what I'm on my phone watching the Bulls game. I was trying to find the baseball playoff game, couldn't find it. It's obviously Chicago Bulls territory. So I'm I'm watching this Bulls game at this crowded arcade bar. And I look at I, I just decide, hey, I'm gonna pull up um my Delta app just to make sure what is my flight again on Sunday? You know, I was a little spacey at the time. I was having a good time. And I look at the flight, and my statement is double, triple, and quadruple check your itinerary. Because on my flight home for Sunday, my plane was not leaving out of Chicago. It was leaving out of Minneapolis. Oh. So now, <laughs> now, in my mindset. So wait, did you, okay, sorry, keep, keep, keep talking. I'm, I'm now having a panic attack. I'm now having like a legitimate <laughs> panic attack. And the lifestyle choices I was choosing was really not helping being alone in Chicago and feeling really good and realizing, oh my God, my my flight is leaving out of Minneapolis on Sunday night, not leaving out of Chicago as originally planned. And your question is probably, did you book two one-way tickets? Yes, I did book two one-way tickets. Oh that, no. That, 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 and you booked you booked two one-way tickets from Minneapolis to Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> How? I, I told my book a, Why didn't you book a round trip? Okay, so yeah. here's and this is where this entire mess <laughs> that was my yeah entire mess comes full circle and, and and by the way, Curb Your Enthusiasm is back and it's a, it was very much a full circle moment. I was supposed to go to New York. That was the original plan six weeks ago. <laughs> I was supposed to go to New York. I didn't know. And round trip tickets to go to New York were insanely expensive. Like I just I couldn't find it. And I was looking for months and months and months. And I figured, well, what happens if you just do one-way ticket options? Like, what is is is, is, is oh, that no. cheaper? So it I, I did. I, it depends, right? So I did two one-way tickets. And by the way, I went back and looked, and I correctly did a one-way ticket from Minneapolis to New York on a Wednesday, and New York to Minneapolis on the Sunday of this trip. But because I had to rearrange the flight, I canceled the Sunday return home flight ticket. And I rearranged the Wednesday ticket. I just like, I rebooked it through Delta. But then when I had to go make a new flight to come home before I took the Chicago trip, oh. I did not clearly look at where this, I almost said, where this plane was leaving. And I booked two one way tickets. So then I, I, I scrambled. I'm at this bar and I'm freaking out inside. So I walk back to the Airbnb because I, I wasn't going to handle this on my phone in a crowded bar in Chicago. Oh my God. And I look at all the return, so I can I can switch the plane, I can switch the airports, and and do the whole return flight. But like literally, the only feasible, cheap option was to come home Saturday morning, because every other option, either to come home Saturday night or Sunday, originally the plan was like five to seven hundred dollars more. I would have oh. had to pay out of pocket. And in this oh. one, I I I'd only had to pay. I, I don't even mind saying this. I only had to pay a hundred and thirty bucks to change. That's not bad. So I kind of looked at it like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut my trip short. And I did get my Airbnb for Saturday night refunded, so that kind of honestly Oh, wow. You offset. had a full refund that last minute? I, I texted her, and I was like, hey, I had something come. I didn't say what, because if I told her I screwed up two one-way yeah. tickets, I would have not gotten this refund. I said I had a family emergency. <laughs> I had something come so up. Oh, Airbnb, you wait. You said, oh, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, well, no I, that, I, that's I, a good call. But that's, yeah. There was no that's way I could admit call. my wrong And I have here. COVID. And, and I have COVID. And you have to come fumigate your basement <laughs> level of your home. I've got my treatments here God, at, at the hospital in Chicago. Uh, I can go home now. Uh, so. Oh, my God. And and as I text you guys, too, audience doesn't know this. When I flew out on Wednesday, they were looking for vouchers and people to change flights. So I actually got, like, an awesome travel voucher to take a later flight out when I left Wednesday. So all things considered, double, triple, and quadruple check your itinerary. But financially, I actually still, I think, came out of this trip a little okay. bit positive with, uh, with the vouchers. My statement to you would be just book <sighs> round-trip flights, especially know, to Chicago. I've never, yeah, done, yeah, I've never done this before. No, you shouldn't it, do that. it bit me hard. <laughs> yeah, dude, you hard. are... Don't ever try a veteran traveler move when you're, you're a not a veteran not. traveler. I, mean, I don't. I, like okay. I don't do that. Okay, right I've got. I've got a. Yeah. I've got a friend who he one of his he has he's got a full time gig, but like his side gig is travel hacks, and he's got a website, 
and it's like how to it's how to game the the point systems and and one of the things he taught me and I've only done this like twice but there's ways you can get cheaper flights if you check connections like let's say you want to go to New York but like the flights to New York are expensive or something you could you could let's say then you could go oh well, what if I fly to Boston but find a connection in New York and just don't right. get on the connection I just go to New York instead there's like like things like yeah, that I, where you can kind of gain that. the you've yeah. done that before yeah, I, I've. You could save I've, like hundreds of dollars on flights. I booked round trip flights with, with no intention of coming back on the plane. <laughs> okay, like that's got to be really expensive, though, right? No, no. Um, this one was actually cheaper to go round trip than to go one way. Interesting. I, I, it's just. But, what, but how on are you? How, how are you getting back then? Are you just like I, I drove back so, with Dawn. Got so it. Okay. It, it was to it was to Cedar Rapids and. I had to go to something, a family thing, and the round trip ticket was cheaper than a one way ticket, but I was going to drive back with her. Okay. So, but I mean, it's just ar- arbitrary. But what Declan did is a savvy veteran move that should be reserved for veterans. See, see Pat I Bev cute at the line. would have told you not to do that. Like, yeah, Pat yeah. Bev would have been get Declan. Tricky. Don't be doing that, man. You got to play defense here. <laughs> Amazing. No, I thought you were going to say you got booted from here. No, I know you guys. That would have been a better story. Like, like yeah, you clogged it up, and they're like, get the hell out of here. Threw your clothes out. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Getting a plunger. Came back about uh, 36 hours earlier. Or, yeah, well, we so. got your note. I yeah. was like, I hope he's okay. Yeah, no, I was fine. I was I was back in my own apartment. So you actually did fine yeah. financially. You just Financially, up. yeah, actually. I, I still had, like, come out positive on this trip, which there is, is hilarious. There is nothing worse, but, though, than when something goes awry on a trip and and you're sort of drunk. And then, and like, alone. you realize it. And alone. Being and alone. No, no, and alone. alone. I don't care and about no being alone. And no one to help you. Like, I, I have dead well, like, parents, okay. so I prepare to be independent. But this was a, oh, my God, what did I just do? Well, yeah, because you feel stupid, too. Yeah, okay. you feel really dumb. As someone who in, in my life has battled depression and some anxiety... What helps in those moments is what is really the worst thing that can happen here? Right. Like, yep, that's right. a good point. What is re- like? I'm not gonna die. I'm not. Yep. Gonna, there's plenty of hotels. Like, I'm not gonna. Right. Go, I'm not gonna go bankrupt if I have to right. spend a couple extra bucks on a hotel tonight. All right. There's 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 flights from Minneapolis to Chicago and vice versa that that go off like taxi cabs for God's sakes. It's and if you, and if you gotta if you gotta drive back rent a car or something yeah, it's like seven it's hours. More, it's more it's more the, that can happen. It's more the initial moment of panic though. Yeah, dude. When you look at like the travel itinerary and you're like, what the f? What did I just do? Because then then <laughs> Phil Phil is exactly right. Like you calm yourself down. But there's always oh that initial, God. like, adrenaline rush or something. Yeah, what did I do? And oh, your no. stomach, like, drops, and you're like, uh, I, I got to go to the bathroom now. Yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom. There it is. All right, travel tips from Declan anyway, Goff right okay, there. Okay, Declan, well, next time, just go round trip. <laughs> my, yeah. It was, and it's just, like, it's so embarrassing. Like, I had to text my siblings being like, I'm coming home tomorrow. Oh, like, what's after? Are you okay? Is your heart exploding again? Because th- that's also what happened when I've taken a trip. I was like, nope, health-wise, I'm fine. Your brother is just... An idiot. Yeah. That's all that happened. So I'm, I'm sure there were some folks oh, in your fa- God, dude. family that weren't surprised. Brother, right. brother, brother Liam said, oh, yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, you mm. did. All right. All right. That's a wrap. Mackie and Judd. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Dex. Be sure to check out Purple Daily as well. And thanks to everyone who has downloaded the Score North app, central hub for everything we do here on Mackie and Judd, Purple Daily, Royce Unchained, the Scuba Doogie Judd's written work. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Mackie and Judd.